Hey, happy Sunday, YouTube. It's your girl, Miss Honey, here for another power. Uh, book three, Raising Canaan Review. This episode is episode eight. I will put the name of the episode in the description down below. Um, episode eight, I thought we were barreling towards... Um, you know, a cataclysmic end. And somehow for me, episode eight kind of fell flat. I mean, it kind of stalled out for me. Um, and through the season, I've heard people talk about different characters or different stories, um, character stories that they're just over, right? Like they just have no use for anymore. And I felt like every character had value, every character was lending something, so on and so forth, until episode eight, you guys. <laughs> Listen, these are my notes for episode eight. Just this one little page, that's it. And you know, you guys know, I watched the episode three or four times. I mean, I got notes on top of notes on top of notes. Right? Not in this episode. In this episode, episode 8, it just kind of fell flat for me. <clears throat> and here is where I'm starting to get a little worn with some of our characters, okay? So in um, this particular episode analysis, it's not going to be as long as I normally do them. It's just not a lot of meat there for me. And I find that anything... Um, that doesn't really give me a lot of meat and, and potatoes. I tend to ramble. I tend to start whining and complaining. And we don't want that, right? So let's just get in um, to this episode. Um, the episode kind of starts out with Rock. And she is sitting in her house all by herself. Basically her castle all by herself. And she is... Um, you know, just contemplating, just thinking over everything, probably mostly Canaan and how um, the two of them have come to this point. And um, Lou is outside and Lou is, it's the middle of the night. Lou is drunk, uh, you know, as hell once again. And he's just standing out there at the end of the walkway and he's just um, blaring. You know, he's saying things he shouldn't be saying. He's he's confessing. He's wrapping Rock and his entire family up in some of the things that he's saying, which is uh, incriminating them as well. She is able to get him inside. As soon as he gets inside, he passes out. She calls Marvin. Marvin comes over. And they're both just trying to figure out what to do with Lou. Like, Lou is on one. What can we do with Lou? It's, 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 it should be pointed out that Lou has just got finished, um, unaliving, um, Scrap's mom. He felt responsible for Scrap. He is for sure responsible for the death of Scrap's mom. And, um, so he is on a, a bender, a, I mean, a real bender, right? And so she and Marvin kind of talk about it a little bit. And she's like, I got Lou on one hand. I got, you know, Kanan and, and he's out here doing something. He's dealing something. I need to figure it out. And Marvin's like, yeah, he's dealing reefer. He's, 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 you know, Mary Jane. And she's like, Ronnie is not messing with Kanan and all Kanan is doing is selling a little reefer. It's something else going on and I need to find out what. And so she sends Marvin on that charge, right? And then we watch um, um, Rock just walk through this episode and touch sort of all points except for Ronnie, except for Kanan, right? Um, but we're going to get into it. Let's, let's talk about Kanan real quick because... I think Kanan probably had the least amount of dialogue in this in this um, episode. So he gets a visit from the social worker and he's laid up on a mattress on the floor in that Roach Motel that belongs to Famous and the social worker comes over there. It turns out and when Jupe left, 
uh, it was Rock's idea to send a social worker over there. Now, I don't know why Rock is still involving white people in her business with Canaan. It's just, you know, it is a form of snitching. I know some of you all didn't feel like that was Rock snitching what she did with the with the pew pew and putting it in his book bag. But anytime you continue to get hot folks involved in your family business, then you low-key snitching. Like, I'm just going to keep it a buck. So she done sent the social worker over there, and and the social worker says, your mom sent me over here because she said you ain't been home in a few days, and she been begging for you to come home. And, and he was like, nah, we just we just was been hanging out because him and Crystal in there smoking. And evidently, the, the social worker don't know what marijuana smoke smell like. You know what I'm saying? It's a mattress on the floor. You know what I'm saying? It, it's, it's roaches parlaying in the corner. But mm -mm, she's like, no, you need to go home. If you don't go home, next time I come back, I'm going to come back with the people, with them folks, you know what I'm saying, with them boys, right, them jump out boys, right, them 5-0. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to have to take you in. And he mad, of course, he mad at Rock. He ain't mad at himself. He mad at Rock. And um, next time we see him, he is, uh, he got Ronnie. <laughs> he got Ronnie running up on the lady outside of her place of business. He runs up on the woman and says something to her. We don't know. We just see Canaan all ducked down in the car. You know. <laughs> you know, while Ronnie go over there and menaces her. Basically threatens her and she scurries off. Now this is annoying to me because we all know she would have scurried back into the building, one. And two, she would have, I mean, she would have fainted. She would have cried. She would have yelled it from the top of the mountains, the whole nine. I mean, you in broad daylight public, right? And you just scurry off and decide you're not going to make no more smoke about this. Okay, why well, introduce the storyline if you're just going to um, give up on it? and fizzle out and go on about your way, right? It would have been more interesting for me to see this social worker continue to stick her nose in than it would for, for y'all to start this storyline and it just fall flat, you know? So Ronnie threatens the social worker and the throat social worker is so afraid she's never going to check on Canaan again. Y'all even uh, y'all already know what them Karens do. Y'all already know. She'd be back if, it's, if this was real. Anywho. So, next thing we get to see where Kanan is making out with Crystal. And Crystal is sort of rubbing it in Juke's face. Speaking of Juke, um, Juke is the new lead for their group, Butter. Right? For some reason, in this scene, she looks older. Than all the girls, older and bigger and more filled out or something. Anyway, her voice is better than both of them, and uh, she's able to make lead. Crystal is upset about it. Um, she spends all of her time with Aisha. They'll, they'll, they're gonna be scissoring in no time. Um, she goes down to the, to the, um, to the um, recruitment office and, you know, gives him a hypothetical, just suppose I, I wanted to back out and I don't want to do this anymore. And the recruitment guy tells her, you signed a contract. Once you sign your name on the dotted line, you pretty much have to go. And um, I thought you wanted to get out. And she was like, well, I'm, I'm not saying I do. I'm just saying, what if I did want to, right? Like she's got this opportunity to be the lead and she has this possible um, scissoring rendezvous with uh, Aisha at some point. You know, there is it's only a matter of time before they start canoodling and kissing and making out. Um, she goes and gets on the train and she's headed for a rehearsal, but instead she uh, gets held up because Crystal has had two big old girls come down to the train station and try to mollywop Juke. And Juke fights them both and ends up counter mollywopping, right? I'll see your fist to the face, 
uh-huh, with the elbow to your chin bone. She does. She makes quick work of both of them, you know, bada bing, bada boom. It's a little bit of a scuffle, and when she gets back to the to the rehearsal, she doesn't go and tell the lady that's over them that Crystal sicked her girls on her and that, 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 that. Juke don't snitch, right? Juke, Juke says she fell. She, she took a little small tumble. <laughs> <laughs> and then she walks up and she tells Crystal, you know, um, your friends don't can't ain't ish, and the friends you sent to beat me up ain't ish, and you ain't either, right? You know, let her know, let her know. These hands get you can get these hands too. Now Aisha and already tried to stop her once when she saw her kissing up on on Kane and and giving her the old, what you gonna do about it look. Aisha stopped her from going over there and molly whopping Kane and Ann Crystal, right? So she had a, she had a horse whooping in her spirit already. <laughs> she just took it out on Crystal's girls, right? This is one of the storylines I'm kinda over already. Like, let's move forward with this. Something tells me, um, episode, this would be episode, the end of the season is going to be the end of Butter. And um, I think our transition from season three to season four is going to involve a bit of a time jump. Right? And we're going to talk a little bit more about that when we get to Marvin. But come on. Let's let's push through this. Okay? So, so um, back to Kanan. Kanan is fully being groomed. Right? Um and it's not just by Ronnie. He's being groomed by Snaps and Pops, right? Like, I thought we brought Snaps and Pops on here as the money, right? Um, they don't work no more. They don't do work no more. They just supplying the money for Ronnie to buy the stash, to buy the work, for Kanan to push the work, right? And so... It's just crazy how they're trying to... This, this you know older couple um are just trying to push him to drink and you don't you know you're you're running a hair and deal you know organization um startup whatever and you can drink if you want to and he's like no and then um they're like you don't have to be like urkel you know you don't drink you don't smoke what do you do like he was like it ain't even about that i'm my own person um you know i don't want to drink with y'all i don't want to sit around and drink with y'all that's what it is you know <clears throat> And so, you know, he then pops and snaps, you know, they continue on with this, with this level of conversation where they're really, really, really trying to full on take Kanan, um, under their wing, under their auspice and, you know, basically hold the whole relationship over Rock's head. Now we are gonna talk about why, but this this moment is kind of important because it was almost like Kanan kind of knew. It's like he kind of knows a little bit that, um, that they don't mean him well. It's, it's almost like he kind of knows. So I don't know. You guys tell me what you think. You put it down below. All right. So like I said, Lou, Lou is drunk all over town, right? Um, he crashed at Rock's house. Rock called her no account mama over. Of all people, Lou can't stand her. And all she's going to do is go through your house and your cabinets and your stuff and your things and fill her car up with your belongings. She is no account, right? She's, she's sticky fingers. She roguish. You know what I'm saying? She begging for money all the time. She looking to see who got money who, so she can push up on that person. She's supposed to be there to keep an eye on Lou and keep him in the house. I don't know how Helen Willis was supposed to get that done. But then Rock peels her off a couple of books. It's nothing more humiliating than asking somebody for a little piece of money and they give it to you in a way that like, it's like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> It's humiliating, but she's overcome that, 
You know what I'm saying? This is how she chooses to earn her money is by begging and and dry begging and and wet begging. You know what I'm saying? Moist begging out of everybody she meet. And you ain't gonna make me believe she didn't go through there and take some of Rock Rock's nice things out of that house. You just not gonna make me believe it. I wouldn't have left at my house. I'm sorry. Anyway, she goes and fix Lou a half burnt breakfast. Lou decides that um he, not only does he not want to be there, this is my question though. You don't remember that you went and talked too much to scrap mama. Do you remember what you did last night? Do you remember what you did to scrap's mama? See, because after you went and did all that yang, 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 you was like, hey, good time, Lou. Now, you got this on the forefront of your mind. You get up this morning, instead of you being like, hey, I'm here at Rock's house. Um, Rock told me to take care of you. Um, and you're like, okay, let me eat this breakfast and then, you know, watch a little thing. No, you remember everything, including your seething anger and rage. And he just walks out. He leaves Rock's house. I don't know how she thought she was going to get that little scrap of a mama. No pun intended. But she is a little tough piece of leather. That She's like chicken gristle. Like, you know what I'm saying? Anyway. So, um, he leaves out of there. He goes down to the, um, down to the cat the club where he has also his studio and he is he's decided i'm not working today i'm not working on no music i'm not doing anything productive i'm gonna be as drunk on these streets as i can be i'm gonna walk these streets and be a drunk i am now officially a drunk on the streets pissy drunk on the streets right before he does, he gives her Fame's tape. And Fame comes in here, give, gives it to Shirley. Take this tape, give it to Fame. Which she does. Fame, uh, he leaves and she's like, Lou, tell me something. What's going on? Are you okay? And he was like, ah, I got drinking to do. That's my new full-time job is being underneath and, and inside of a bottle of some sort. Right? And I'm drinking straight from the bottle. This what this what I do, all right. And so, um, Fame comes in and he wants to know if Lou is there. And she was like, "No, Lou's not here. I don't know when he's gonna be back. He might be gone for a few hours, a few days, a few weeks, a few months." This is supposed to give us the impression that Lou is not gonna be here much longer, right? Like the same way they talk about Unique, like he's on vacation. Um, but everybody knows he's, you know, unalived. Um, this, she's kind of making these kind of conversations about Lou. And um, he takes the tape and he says, okay, thank you. And then he thinks twice about it and says, hey, you mind if I come and I work in the studio? And she was like, well, that's not really my equipment. Those are not really my things. Um, she said, but, you know, I think Lou thought a lot of you and he wouldn't mind you coming in here and working in this studio. Okay. And she said, but, you know, you can't come in here and piddle around with these this equipment for free. You're going to have to earn your keep around here. And he was like, okay, bet, fine, they shake on it. So now fame works for Miss Shirley um, in lieu of Lou, right? And... I mean, either way, Miss Shirley, you getting your bar door kicked in. Your 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 bar that you've worked hard and is supposed to be your retirement fund is gonna be raided, right? If you're not careful, it's gonna get shot up and set on fire. You best separate yourself from these folks. I'm telling you, because I don't know if you could tell or not. I know I know how much you enjoy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? things right but if you ain't careful you're gonna lose your entire life savings messing with these ninjas that's all i'm gonna say miss shirley okay all right so let's talk about marvin and then we're gonna wrap rock up look um marvin works very hard he he um immediately goes to work 
um, for Rob trying to figure out what it is Kanan is doing. And so first he surveils Kanan and he sees Ronnie just standing there, you know, watching the whole thing. Um, it's so creepy. It's so creepy. And, and I'm just trying to figure out which one is the symbiote, right? Like, is Ronnie the symbiote to Kanan? Is Kanan uh, the symbiote to Ronnie? Like, which one of them is is feeding off of the other? It's a it's a weird, weird dynamic. Um, him running to tell Ronnie about the social worker and Ronnie going over there, she ain't going to bother you no more. You know what I'm saying? Uh, him sitting next to Kanan uh in the restaurant with pops at the bar with pops and 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 snap and um you know kind of kind of speaking for Kanan you know piping up and you know you know just encouraging him to come up under the wing of snap and like it's weird it's weird and seeing it from Marvin's point of view from his from his car um it looks it, it it it's so apparent it's so apparent that this relationship is odd it's visually odd and it just literally doesn't make any sense otherwise as well but i digress so he sees how kanan is running things he's giving packages to his runners one of the runners is on a scooter marvin follows the guy um and he lays back he doesn't hurt the guy marvin is is not um inherently violent uh it doesn't seem like he's kind of calmed it all down and he makes mention of this to rock too he kind of tells her that you know um, when he when he says he thinks that Lou can recover and Lou can get better and Lou doesn't have to be this this addict right and she says it wants an addict always an addict that type of thing and he said no that wasn't true for me and I feel like I am living better I'm doing better I'm making better choices and Lou can do that too so anyway um I said all that because he doesn't hurt the guy in any way he uh, follows him gets him off the scooter and takes the um the backpack and he looks in the backpack and he sees what the guy has and he sees the name on it and there's some little white packets and um it says south side i mean i don't know if that was just like the wraps or what <coughs> <coughs> And not the product inside. But they look like goodie powders. They just say a south sign on them. So, um, he gives the guy all of his stuff back. He knows he's accountable for it. He sends him on his way. And so, later he does reveal to Rock that the competition she's hearing about on the streets is actually Kanan and Ronnie. They're dealing heroin, right? But before all of this um, comes to fruition for Rock, he goes and sits down and has breakfast with Gerald and his two daughters. And I'm just like, why are you here, Marvin? Why, why are you here? Why are you... You got so much going on. You're in such a zen, you know... Um, you know type of mentality like you you've lost your sense of defense right offense you've lost your sense of um um being aware of your surroundings until gerald gets to talking to the point where something hits his ear wrong Basically, Gerald is referencing the Thomas family and owning the studio and the violence that befell Rock and his family and on the studio. And just as he's about to mention Crown, um, Marvin um, shuts him up. Like, what are you talking about? Why are you bringing that up? You're supposed to be writing about my daughter. And he's like, come on, Marvin. I need to <clears throat> get her backstory. Learn about her family. And he was like, no, you don't need to be doing that. You don't need to be talking about that. And you don't need to be bringing that up to me. And, and Gerald is like, um, well, no, I mean, 
okay, that's fine. If you don't want to talk about it. And then he reapproaches, but it's the same jargon, right? He just scrambles it up differently and, you know, turns it around. It backs it in instead of pulls it in. But it's the same information. It's the same, you know, line stepping, right? And so Marvin's looking at the little girl coloring, and he is just being so kind and so sweet to the little girl. And he said, no, you got to stay in the line. You like your father. You know you don't know how to stay within the lines. And he kind of is, you know, low-key threatening um, Gerald. Letting Gerald know you're going too far now. Now, I come to your house, and I'll clean it, and I'll feed your children and make sure they're taken care of and put in school and everything, and they don't freeze out in the cold. But I don't have no problem whatsoever snapping your neck. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, uh. Wink, wink, right? And um, Gerald goes home and he's hanging out with his kids, um, not shooting up, you know. And uh, someone's outside. They give him a little honk when he goes out there. They blink the lights and he leaves the kids inside and goes out. <laughs> And gets in the car. And when he gets in the car, he gets in the car with, um, he gets in the car with, uh, the guys that are over the task force. Right? He's their ops. Right? Like, he, he'll he never be able to testify he's a junkie. Right? Unless he's pretending to be a junkie. Um, you know, those are fake track marks in his arm. He'll never, ever, ever get to testify. Junkies just are terrible witnesses. But what he can do is lead them in a direction where they can um, gather their own information about Marvin. And so, therefore, he is a threat and he is a problem. But at this time, um, although Marvin suspects, he doesn't know for sure. Um, but it's a lot of stuff brewing, right? Because... Um, Nicole's dad ends up talking to Burke's father, you know, father to father. And he doesn't really have a lot to talk to him about because, you know, they're trying to besmirchify Burke's good career name by saying she had something to do with Nicole's death. And, you know, uh, Burke's father just wants to talk it through. You know, Captain Burke just wants to talk it through. And he comes to realize that, um, one of the people that's leading Nicole's dad to believe that Burke has something to do with Nicole's death is Howard. And it puts the bug in Burke's, Captain Burke head that Howard has something to do with this, which we all knew it was coming. We all knew it was coming, right? Um, so... I got my theory, but we're going we gonna to talk about it. Let's push through here. Okay, so this is what's going on with Lou and Kanan and Marvin and Juke. Let's talk about Rock, okay? So Rock um, tries to get Helen Willis to keep Lou there um, while she goes out. She goes out, and she goes and she talks to the truck folks first, the ones that told you know, this is my brother. I'm in the business with my brother. Turns out it wasn't Quan or number 37. It was a completely different guy who's on drugs and a junkie. And the one that told her he wasn't interested, the brother that said he wasn't interested, he's actually the more responsible one. And the other brother doesn't really have any say-so. Now, mind you, um... Rock could go either way here. She could use either one of them, but she makes the smart decision and uses the responsible brother. And what she does is she has Marvin, when he's not with Gerald, she has Marvin go and follow this guy and find out he's having an affair. And uh, the hooker that got him out, Marvin paid her, um... So he could take pictures of this guy with the hooker. And then, you know, if they don't let Rock use their trucks to transport the work, then she's going to tell his wife about the hooker. So these are, these are, these are Rock's tricks. 
Um, it's better than just icing the man, I guess, and using the using the junky brother as a puppet. Like this is actually a more stable way of doing it. So shout out to them. Marvin was really really cute in this scene. Um, so she does that. She gets that taken care of. Then she goes talks to Quan. Quan is like this, and this ain't gonna work. You 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 know I gave you two months. What has it been like? Forty eight hours, seventy two hours. Like what are we talking about, Quan? Calm down. Calm down. You ain't got but two drug dealers. Unique and now rock. You ain't got no other drug dealers nowhere. Like, get yourself together, Quan. I'm sick of your mess. I don't understand why we keep bringing Quan into this. You know what I'm saying? And you always in this office. Where, where's the opioids? Huh? Where the work at? I don't like the way he be talking to Rob. But Rob was like, don't worry about it. I got it all together. I got my transportation together. I got everything together. You ain't got to worry about all that. Then she leaves. <clears throat> and she, uh, and Quan tells her, there's some people out there working. There's some other folks out here working in these streets, taking all, taking all your business. What is you working on? What are you doing? I need a progress report by the end of the week, right? And so she leaves and she goes and she sees pops and snaps and they say to her when she comes in i mean she come in baby she was she was floating she was gliding baby in, in a suit with these faux cutouts baby and shapely ugh, ugh. and you know she got about 15 16 pair of black boots mm-hmm and that handbag it looked like old nasty piece of Anne Klein, but it might have been a Chanel or something. But I remember them handbags, child. And um, she come in, and of course, Snaps is the first one, child. I can't remember who the woman is, but the woman, she the first one. She, Of course, she hating. She said, I remember when you used to be in here in pigtails. You know, just a little whip of a thing. Bop, bop, bop. I was like, ain't nothing worse than old lady bitterness. You know what I'm saying? The girl look good. The girl is bad. Right? She's bad. Give her props where props are due. Right? And right, basically, Rock is like, I need y'all to stay away from my son. Basically. I, I, I don't know what's going on, but I need y'all to stay away from my son. And so they were like, we don't mess with your son. We dealing with Ronnie who dealing with your son. She was like, listen, if you guys were not thumbs up in this and giving this a, a, the, a, the go... Okay, none of this will be going on. If you guys weren't funding it, none of this will be going on, right? And um, she was like, that's not right. I want you to stay away from my son. And they were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. It was some low-key threats from Rock's side, Rock's side, and low-key threats from Snap and Pop's side, right? But we all get it. Rock lets them know after they, you know, want to give they low-key threat. She lets them know, you need to stay away from my son, period. It's non-negotiable. If you want this thing to get bloody, if you want this thing to get, get, you know what I'm saying, medieval, out this muggy buggy, okay? Huh? Keep mucking with my son, right? The man snaps the pops, whatever his name is. He don't like it. He don't like it. How dare she come in here? How dare she do that, 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 that. Now, to me, Ronnie was way more aggressive when he came to see you about work. Way more aggressive. Way more aggressive. It's a woman. A woman stepping to you and telling you what you're not going to do is why Pops or Snaps or whatever his name is was so mad. I'm convinced of it. Okay, he stands up. He's like, how dare this so-and-so come in here and think she going to tell me, bop, bop, bop. All you do is move money. That's what you say. So why are you now in this war? Huh? Why are you now leaning in on taking this, this woman's 16-year-old son and, and, and teaching them how to ruin every piece and part of their lives? It's, it's, it's stupid. It's dumb. Anyway, piss me off. Then Rock go see Pernessa. Because she trying to figure out if Ronnie ain't getting his work from Snaps and Crackle and Pop, uh, uh, where he getting it from. And so Pernessa don't want to talk about it. Because, you know, Ronnie went over there and menaced her in episode 7. And 
he tells, she tells him she don't want to have nothing to talk to her. She don't want to talk to her. She don't want no parts of it. He got a girlfriend. He living in that house over there. And she just want to stay away from Ronnie. And, she, and, and um, Rock say he got a girlfriend. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, Ronnie got a girlfriend? Really? Who is his girlfriend? And she was like, I, I don't, I, you know, I, well, he was hanging out with the lady over there at, from the bodega, and they seemed like they was getting it on real good, right? And Rock is like, okay. And she said, you need to take care of yourself, and you need to be careful. This is what she tell Pernessa. Pernessa say, I ain't got nothing else to say to you, Rock. I was like, you need to see if Rock can give you some money. So you can get the heck out of Dodge. That's what you need to be doing. You need to see if Rock can give you some train fare money. But I digress. That's Pernessa. Okay. Then she leaves there and goes to see Joaquin. Joaquin is Juliana, the bodega lady's cousin. He's the one that normally provides work. Now, remember, Juliana worked a deal with Ronnie underneath the table where she would skim off of Joaquin work and give it to Ronnie. And then Joaquin was supposed to be none the wiser. But now here Rocky is dropping his tea on Joaquin. And Joaquin, who I promise you, I promise you he give me so <laughs> Lobo's vibes. <laughs> he was like, you know what? She has been acting weird. She been acting different. He was like, I need to investigate. And, and Rock just laid it out for you. She got nicer things now, right? She being a little standoffish, right? She da 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 That's because she's supplying that work. And she's supplying that work on my territory. It's against the rules. And I want to I wanna be able to handle it. Joaquin said, I'll let you know. And she said, just please let me know. And next thing we know, um, uh, Juliana's there making herself a lovely cup of tea and a gold leaf cup. And, and, um, she's got beautiful, nice, gaudy, uh, furniture where she out here just spending money on all this, the, only the ugliest things. <laughs> <laughs> to make herself look fancy and rich and accomplished, right? But it's true what Rock said about Juliana. She was always this person, right? It was just when she got rid of her Gabriel, um, Juliana's husband, she could really become. She could really just live out loud and be this, be this, this total. See you next Tuesday that she is right now, right? So when Rock get in there, um, she just appears in her house. And, you know, she's just, Juliana's like, wait, 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 wait. What are you doing here? If it, All I got to do is tell my cousin Joaquin that you're here and he's going to make quick work of you. And she was like, oh, no, Joaquin is why I'm here. Like, we all know that you ain't ish. We all know that you a double dealing, backstabbing, no account. Low life to face it. See you next Tuesday. Okay. And so Juliana's like, let me just get over here and sit down where I could get sit next to my sofa gun. And before she could take two steps, good rock pops her in the knee. And then when she pops her in the knee, she goes down and she stands over and she begins to pontificate. She said, you know what? What you fail to realize is that I always win. Now I do take some losses. But I take them losses on the chin. Okay. I, I open them up. I look at them. And then I come back the next day and I handle them losses. I reapproach those losses. Right. And yeah, you that loss. Right? Any loose ends that cause me to lose in the past or fall short, I take care of it. I meet it head on and I take care of it. And that's you. And then in this ridiculous act of overkill, she book one in the knee. We did that already. Here, heart, here, I don't know what, and here, head. Overkill, but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I did want to see her just just full on Molly Whopper. You know what I'm saying? But we did get some Molly Whopping with Juke. I just wanted to see it with 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 Rock and, and Juliana. I wanted her to drag Juliana down the boulevard. You know what I'm saying? Just slapping her, slapping her, slapping her till her face is beat red. But I digress. And that is how the episode ends. 
that's how the episode ends. That is the full scope of this episode, right? Let's talk about Marvin really quick because I have some ideas about what's going to go on with Marvin. I think Marvin's going to end up taking one from the team. I don't think that Marvin's going to end up um, um, deceased. I think Lou is probably going to be the deceased Thomas. I mean, remember, up in, we're in episode three, and the Thomases really haven't taken a hard loss, right? They really have not lost any of the key players. So at some point, they've got to lose a key player, all right? And they're setting it up to be Lou. I don't think Lou... But because of how they set it up, I don't think the audience, the crowd is going to feel as bad about Lou um, being, being, you know, one of the people that's taken out this season. Because they've, they've kind of set him up to where we just don't really care for him anymore because he's doing a lot of that, 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 that. But ultimately, I think who we really are going to be losing is Marvin this season. And I don't think it's because he's going to be deceased. I think Marvin's going to take one for the team and and go and get incarcerated that's what i think i think he's going to go to jail behind all of this and he's going to do it to to spare juke and rock and all of that he's going to take it on the cuff and 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 take the blame for everything and i think then when we go into season four we're gonna we're gonna be experiencing a serious jump time jump Right, I think we're going to be do away with high school and all of that stuff is going to be no more. And we're going to be we're going to have moved into um, maybe like 18 year old, 17, 18 year old um, Canaan and 19, 20 year old Juke, that type of thing, away in the service, coming back to visit, that type of thing. And her pops is in jail. That's my prediction. You guys tell me what you think. Uh, what did you think of this episode? Put it down below. Listen, um, and until next time, honeybees, mwah, mwah, mwah. I'll holla.